Hey everyone, welcome to another lesson in this Tosca automation course. Today we are going to talk about an important concept known as recovery scenarios. Now no matter which automation tool you work on, you have to think about how you can recover from unexpected failures or errors. Now in some tools, this recovery feature is already present or in some customized automation, you have to write your own scripts to do that. So if you have been working with Selenium, you have to write something like a try catch block in order to come out of unexpected errors or exceptions. In Tosca, there is a recovery engine which already provides you with that feature. So you have to provide a collection of test steps which are called recovery scenarios and they will kick in whenever a test case fails. So let's see how you can configure this recovery scenario in Tosca. So there are basically three steps in order to configure a recovery scenario. The first step is to enable it in Tosca and you can do it in two ways. So the first way is to go to the settings dialog and apply it to all the objects in the workspace. But if you want to specify it for a particular object, then you have to do it via configuration parameters. And this will be applicable for individual test case folders. Now I'll show you how you can do this, but let's first go through all the different steps here. The next step is to create the recovery scenarios. And you can do it at the test case level. So either you can create it for test case folder or the individual test cases. And the last step is to specify when this recovery scenario should be applied for your test cases. And that you can do using this property, which is called retry level. Once you have created your recovery scenario, you can go and change this property. Now it may be by default set to test case, but you can also put other values like test step value, test step and the test case. So what does it mean? It means this recovery will kick in when a test step value or a test step or a test case fails. Now you can change it based on your scenario or your requirement, but you have to put uh, something on this property retry level. So all of these three steps are important and this is how you can configure your recovery scenario for your test cases. Now let's go to Tosca and see this uh, in real time, how you can apply this recovery scenario, how you can enable them and how you can create them in your test cases. So I have now launched my Tosca commander and let's see how we can enable recovery at a global level, which is for all the objects in the workspace. And that you can do by going to your settings and inside the settings, you need to go to T box. Inside T box, you need to go to recovery. And here you will find different options in order to configure or enable your recovery scenarios. So you can enable recovery scenario at three levels. The first is on dialogue failure. Second is on exception failure. And the third is on verification failure. So the first one, is related to your failure with respect to your specific application, right? So if Tosca is not able to interact anymore with the application due to some uh, unexpected failure, then you can specify a certain value here, right? So choose what Tosca should do in this case, okay? So let me expand this and here you can see all the values and the comments, okay? So there are four different values. Either you can halt the execution completely, you can execute the next test case, and you can continue with the execution, okay? Or you can just do a recover. Now these are all the four values. If you want to work with recoveries, you have to select a recover in this particular case, okay? And similarly, you need to change all of these if you want to recover from all of these different types of failures, okay? So on dialogue failure, on exception failure, and on a verification failure, 
in all these cases tosca should run the recovery scenarios that's what we are currently setting this okay now there are three other properties called test case retries test step retries and test value retries now what are these is these are the maximum number of recovery attempts tosca will do in order to recover a particular test case a particular test step or a particular test step value okay now you can choose any value or enter any value here right um, you can do a two or three or you can set different values for all the different types okay or you can have the same values here so this is where you enable your recovery at a global level for all your objects in the workspace okay once you do that just close this window and it will enable the recovery for all the objects okay now say for example you don't want to apply the same level of recovery for different uh, objects on your workspace in that case what you can do is whenever you are creating a test case folder you can go to test configuration so i have created this recovery folder okay and here under test configuration you can add different test configuration parameters okay so click on create test configuration parameter and here you can select on dialog failure okay and you can select a value so i want to recover similarly again i can add another test configuration failure and i will say on exception failure and i will say recover and the last one which is on verification failure okay and here also i will say recover right so this is how you can set the recovery at a folder level right once you do this the global settings will be overwritten okay so whatever you specify here will apply and not the global settings okay and uh, similarly you can do it for how many times you want tosca to do this reattempt right so that again you have to add a configuration parameter so let's search for them so these will be a uh, test case retries okay and i have to specify some value i'll specify one for now and then you can also add the other ones like test step retries and the last one which is called the test step level retries or it should be let's search for them okay set test step value retries so uh, here i can specify just two and two okay so these are all the parameters which we have set at a test case level okay and this will overwrite the global entries so our first step is now complete we have enabled recovery uh, at our test case folder level right and now we want to create a recovery scenario right and how you can do that as i said earlier you have to do it at a test case level so go to your test case folder and here right click and then go here and select create recovery scenario collection okay you can also use the shortcuts control n and control r okay so let's do this right now and you will see here it will create a folder called recovery scenarios right so this is the parent folder again you need to right click on this and you need to now select create recovery scenario okay so you can create multiple scenarios inside this and this is our recovery scenario folder right the difference is this is a white plus and this is a red plus okay now inside this we need to create a collection of test steps right so which can be executed when this recovery is triggered by tosca but first let's understand where we will apply this recovery and why we would uh, apply this right so to do this i have made a very dumb test okay so what i have done is i want to click on this submit button here right but now what has happened is there has been a development change right so if i refresh this page you will see now the submit button is disabled for around 13 or 14 seconds right so after this time is 
gone then only the submit button would be enabled right now consider for this example this is the change and our test is going to fail right because the previous functionality was submit button was always enabled and now the current functionality is it is enabled after some time is spanned right so now we have to think about how we can recover out of this failure right i can go and directly change my test but uh, if i don't want to do that every time there is a functionality change like this right so i need to think of a way where i can recover out of unexpected errors in my executions so that my executions are not halted because of some change or some unexpected error right so for this particular example um, i have created this uh, three test steps right so it will open the url it will click on the submit button and it will close the page now here what i have done is i'm also checking for whether that button is enabled or not before i click on that button right so ideally it should fail here because it won't be enabled as soon as i launch the page right it has to wait for some time and that's where we have to uh, enable our recovery scenario right now let's first see how this uh, execution will fail and then we will see how we can apply a recovery scenario to make this pass okay so let me close this and let's go ahead and run this in scratchbook now while this is executing another important thing to note is recovery scenario only works when you run your test using an execution list okay so if you run it using a scratch book uh, the recovery scenario won't uh, kick in so it will execute just as a simple test the recovery scenario won't work okay so as expected the test has failed as you can see and uh, that is what we expected out of this okay so the submit enabled uh, the verification has failed now here i can also apply two types of uh, recoveries right i can either do it at a test case failure level or i can also do it at on verification failure right so i can basically enable it at um, any of these places right so before we um, add a recovery right uh, we need to also do the third step which is the retry level property right so we have to set some uh, retry level property value here so when you create a recovery scenario go to the properties here you will find the retry level and we have to specify some level where this retry should be kicked in so it either it could be a test step the step value or test case right so for this example i will keep it as test case okay and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to search and add a test step here so that uh, this test step would be kicked in whenever the recovery scenario is uh, enabled okay so here what i want to do is i want to check or i want to wait for this particular button to be enabled before it goes and clicks on it okay so that's what i want to do so i'm going to change this action mode to wait on and i will wait for it to be enabled okay so this wait on action mode uh, it will ask tosca to wait until this particular value is achieved for this particular object okay so i will rename this i will say check submit okay so this is my recovery scenario as you can see and this is my test step inside the recovery scenario now what will happen is when this particular test case which is the submit uh, when this fails this retry level will kick in and it will identify that my test case has failed and it will ask the recovery engine to start the recovery scenario right so it will go into this recovery scenario and then it will execute this particular step which is to wait till that particular button is enabled and then again it will execute the test case right so it will again come here and it will again check whether it is enabled and it will click on it and then it will go to the other steps right so this is the flow now let's see whether it actually works or it doesn't work right so 
as I said, we have to do it in execution list, right? So let me drag my execution list here. And I have already created an execution list folder. So I'm going to drag this recovery folder into my execution list folder so that execution list is created here. I will say here recovery, right? And this contains my recovery test case, okay? So let's go ahead and run this so that our recovery scenario can now kick in when there is a failure and it can recover out of that failure so that the test cases pass, okay? So let's see this in action now. So at this point, the test case is failing, but it has already kicked in the recovery scenario where it is asking Tosca to wait till this particular button is enabled. And then it will again execute the test case. We'll see this all in our results where it will be more clear what is actually happening. Right. So if I go back to my execution list here and I go to my execution here, the open URL is working fine. Right. And if you go into the submit, if you look carefully here, the first step has failed, right? The submit enabled has failed because the submit button was not enabled and hence it failed. And then what Tosca did is it kicked in this recovery scenario, right? So where it is waiting for that button to be enabled, right? It is executing this particular step. And after that, again, this step is getting executed here right and this is where it is coming and it is now enabled so it is clicking on that button and that's where this particular test case has passed right so it has attempted just once because i had put in one one attempt right if there are scenarios where you want tosca to attempt more than once right you can uh, increase the test case retries right or the retry levels so you can do it uh, here on the test configuration parameter. So test case retries, you can increase this to any value, right? But in my case, it should be done at one retry. But in some other scenarios, it might take more retries, right? So you can set um, any values, but um, if the test case passes, uh, it won't go into the other retries, okay? If it fails, then it will continue uh, retrying until this value is reached okay so this is how uh, you can use recovery scenario to um, recover your test cases from unexpected failures or unexpected um, exceptions now there is also another concept called cleanup scenarios okay and that I would be explaining in the next session so keep watching our channel for more Tosca lessons uh, coming up every Friday so see you uh, next Friday with another new Tosca lesson.